Hey, it's Erin. Let's talk about building and sculpting beautiful hamstrings. I want to share my top exercises with you, but before we get into training, let's talk about the hamstrings just for a bit. They can be very tough to target, for one, because you can't see them. You need a solid mind-muscle connection and or cues that will get you the maximum results from each rep. And so within each exercise, I'll share those cues with you and that will, of course, help with getting the maximum muscle fiber recruitment and it's going to help you build that mind-muscle connection, which ultimately is going to give you those strong curves. It's also important to note that the hamstrings are responsible for a few different movement patterns. So simply going into the gym and doing leg curls is not going to get you optimal results. You need to train them through a few different movements, which of course I'll share with you too. Finally, hamstrings are fast twitch and slow twitch. So you'll need a combination of heavy weights, lower reps, and lighter weights, higher reps. Before we get into the exercises, be sure to like and comment and let me know if there's something you wanna see in the future, what you like, what you don't like. It really helps the channel and it helps tailor these videos for you. So without further ado, let's get in there and train. Let's get into these exercises. The first exercise is a dumbbell RDL. Now the reason I love dumbbells versus a bar is because you're able to control where the resistance is coming from. With just a barbell, the barbell is going to be in front of your body and the furthest you can bring it back is along your shins. With dumbbells, you'll notice I'm running the dumbbell along the sides of the legs and what this does is it helps further place focus on those hamstrings. Now with this, keep your back nice and flat, keep your chin tucked, that's going to help you keep that back flat. As soon as you allow your chin to come up or even look up, that is going to create an arch in the back. Weight goes through the heels and keep those dumbbells right along the sides of the body. And as soon as you reach that full stretch, so just before you feel your back starting to round, pause just a second and then focus on pulling with just the hamstrings. This is going to hit kind of a little bit higher up on the hamstrings, four sets of 10. The next exercise is a kettlebell swing. This is also going to work your hip extension, a little bit of pelvic tilt, tilt and a little bit of knee flexion. Now with the kettlebell swings, I like to go a little bit heavier. So start with a 20 kilo and move up from there. This is an explosive movement. This is going to work those fast twitch muscles. And all you're doing is you're driving with your hips, your glutes, hamstrings, and only controlling the kettlebell with the upper body. So this movement is really awesome for developing that roundness, that nice peak in the hamstring. Four sets of 10. The next exercise is the good morning. Now with this exercise, you'll notice it's a very similar movement to the RDL, but we've got the weight across the traps rather than along the sides of the body. Now with a good morning, this is an exercise that was developed for power lifters back in the 60s or 70s. And it's meant to strengthen the entire posterior chain. But the reason this exercise is so effective is that it trains the hamstring through that full range of motion. And it's one of the only exercises that does it. So it's really important to include this in your repertoire. Now go lighter here. It's not important to go heavy. It's most important to get that proper form. So drive your weight through the heels, keep your back nice and flat. And as you bend at the hip, think about pushing your hips and glutes back and keeping a soft knee. So you don't want to bend the knee, but you also don't want to lock it out. And I would say three to four sets of 12 to 15 here. So you're going a little bit lighter really focus on that full extension. The next exercise is a back hyper on the Smith machine. And the reason I love this exercise is that it's a little bit unconventional and you are really going to feel that in the peak of your hamstring. And of course it's body weight. If this is too easy, feel free to add weight so you can hold weight right at your collarbone and make it just a little bit more difficult. 
Now with this, you're working with a limited range of motion because you've got the ground and you only want to come up to 180 degrees. So stop when your body is in a straight line. And when you get to that mid rep, so when your body's at 180 degrees, really squeeze those hamstrings and the glutes. And you're going to work on three to four sets of 10 to 12 here. And this doesn't look like a tough exercise, but it is absolutely killer. It's also going to help work the inner portion of the hamstrings, which can be a little bit tougher to hit. And if the bar is um, a little bit too tough on your ankles, feel free to use a bar pad or a towel for your ankles. It's important to go nice and slow here. Keep that back nice and flat and you can tuck your pelvis in just a little bit and that'll help you get better hamstring recruitment, especially up at the top towards the glutes. The next exercise is a single leg bridge. And the reason I love this exercise so much, well, there are several, is because it's a unilateral or a single leg exercise. So the goal here is to work both sides evenly. There are a couple of things to really consider here. Keep that heel on the ground so you don't want uh, you want hardly no weight on your foot and if you can just balance on your heel that's great keep the heel close to the glute keep your hips square to the ground now it's not uncommon for one hip to rise up higher than the other make sure they stay square and make sure your free leg is not kicking up while you do it so that free leg is just simply out of the way you're keeping it nice and straight and you're not aiding yourself with that free leg and you should feel it in your glutes. You'll feel it in the upper part of your hamstring and also in that peak part of the hamstring. This is a body weight exercise that you can do anywhere. This is awesome for kind of taking uh, inventory of how your muscles are working. So traditionally you'll have one leg that is stronger than the other. This will help you figure out which leg is stronger and Start with the weaker side and let that dictate the number of reps that you do on the stronger side. And then you'll even everything out. The next exercise is a Nordic curl. This one is actually my favorite exercise for hamstring development. They've done quite a few studies on the Nordic curl and found that this is the number one exercise for growing your hamstrings. Now it's obviously a body weight exercise and you can control the tension. And what I like to do here, is keep the body nice and straight so you don't want to bend at the hips at all everything should stay in line and then try to hold yourself up as long as possible and then put your hands out and pull yourself back up in addition to pushing yourself back up with your hands so you can make this exercise really easy by just blowing through it or you can make it much more difficult by really really going slow on that descent there and because it's so much negative here, so your eccentric or your negative portion, which is this part here, there's so much of that. It causes micro tears or little bits of damage in the muscle, which are then repaired when you rest and they are stronger than before. So this is great for growing those hamstrings. Three to four sets of as many reps as you can do. So it may be 10 reps, then eight reps, then six, and then four. Don't be alarmed if your reps descend, if, you do, if you're doing less as you go on. We're at the lying leg curl machine. Now here, one really key trick, tilt your pelvis forward. You see how that flattened out the back? And what this is going to do is it's going to increase your muscle fiber recruitment like crazy. And make sure that you're tilting that pelvis forward, keeping your back absolutely flat, almost think about rounding your back throughout. And this is going to work that middle part of the hamstring. This is your knee flexion part of the, the hamstring exercise. And it will hit a little bit behind the knee to the peak. So you're working on that lower part of the hamstring here. Go lighter when you do this and make sure you keep your feet dorsiflexed. So you're gonna keep your toes closer to your knees. You're not going to point your toes. And what this is going to do is it's going to help keep the calves out of the equation. So a lot of times when we point the toes, there's uh, a little bit of calf recruitment here. And when you dorsiflex your feet, 
you're keeping them out of the equation, give a little mid rep pause. That's going to improve your mind muscle connection. So the, the slower you go, the more you're able to really feel what's going on. When it gets tough, make sure you're not using momentum. Make sure you keep that proper form. Four sets of 10 to 12 here would be awesome. When training a muscle group that you can't see, like the hamstrings, be present and mindful, especially during those last two to three reps. It's going to give you amazing results. If you like this video and you try some of the exercises, please tag me on social media. I love seeing your progress and your accomplishments. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to click that little bell. You'll be the first to know whenever a new video comes out. Thanks for watching. Until next time, train smart and train hard, y'all.